Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Taco, and we're in for a treat today. I'm working on another reel that uh, Scott sent me, and this one appears to be unused other than they put line on it at some point. This is a compact reel. It's the Daytona 2, number 95, and everything about this thing says it's new in the box, except for the line that's on it. So, one of the things that says Everybody asks, is, what can you learn from a box where you can learn a lot? It's made in Japan. But also, Compact stands for Commerce Pacific Incorporated. They were out of Los Angeles. And uh, we are going to have the opportunity to open this one up, show you how it's made. And, uh, well, if you have one of these, show you how to service it. And if not, just kind of, uh, this will be a study in, in fishing wheel design and mechanics. And there's not much to do here because it hasn't been fished. But I appreciate Scott finding these. Scott has found quite a few of these now at uh, West Coast Flea Markets. Some are, I have to say, some are better than others. I was just working on one of his uh, Daiwa reels that, uh, well, had seen better days. But uh, this one is a beauty. We're going to try and keep all of this together. We're going to try not to get it oil stained or anything so that uh, he can hold on to these uh, tags and so on. So this says that the reel is fully guaranteed against all defects in material and workmanship for one year. Well, that one year is long gone. My guess is this reel is 1970s. And uh, on the back end, for better care, clear. Clean your reel with a damp cloth and wipe it dry shortly after use. And then uh, don't wait until the next time you go fishing. Sage advice. Apply a drop of light machine oil to the handle shaft and to the center spool. And do not get oil on the rubber. Well, we found a lot of cases where that oil on the rubber will actually deteriorate the reel. And Daiwa, of all, is pretty famous for that. There's a whole series of Daiwas where they use the rubber um, anti-reverse claw and the oil just kind of melted it away. So if you have one of those, just be aware of that as you go forward to do that. And uh, this is the piece that they're actually referring to. They said that the rubber snubber, <laughs> well there's a little rubber piece right here on the inside of this uh, bale. It's uh, kind of a, uh, a protector, if you will. And if you find that your bale wire is um, too far down. It's probably because this little piece is worn away or uh, got damaged somehow and then you would see your bell wire would be set like this and a lot of folks say you know do I rebend it what do I do but you, you generally try and find another way to substitute the piece that is broken. All right let's take this reel apart we'll show you how this reel is made and uh, while we do that I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel and if you do subscribe to my channel, please hit the notification button. That way you're going to see all of the videos that I post. And uh, you'll be able to make a determination as to whether that's a video you want to watch or not. So I, I work on all kinds of reels. Here's a vintage spinning reel, circa 1970. Tomorrow I may be working on the newest model of a pen uh, spin fisher or something. It's just whatever comes into my shop. And again, a big shout out to Scott, who just kind of sends me these flea market finds and uh, just gives us the opportunity to work on these and to show folks how they're made. All right, this is typical of a setup for a 1970s reel. We have a trip lever here. There's a spring. And what I always tell folks is, as you're working on these reels, if you, uh, if you haven't worked on a reel before, take pictures along the way. They're invaluable when you go to reassemble and you don't know, maybe you forgot a step or something. So here's a spring tag that runs along the side of the case here, it wraps around the spool and comes back and there's a hook on that tag that pulls this in. And so what happens is you set your bail, you can see how it pulls in, and then you're going to come to a point here, right there, where you're going to have that bail. Uh, trip, bump, and as you turn it, it's going to flip it. Oh, I'm going the wrong way with that. 
there you go. Oh, you didn't see that very well, but that's the way that this one operates. I apologize. All right, let's take the off uh, the handle off. We'll show you the inside of this. And uh, I like these reels a lot. They come in all kinds of flavors. I think there's a Cadillac version out there, and there's several other uh, compact branded ones. And I think, if I remember, this is a trade wheel kind of a thing. It was made by one of the six or seven major Japanese wheel manufacturers in the 70s. And a lot of reels look the same. So uh, don't be surprised if you have a different name like Diamond on your reel. Uh, and it looks identical to the, uh, the compact because, well, it is except for maybe case color and brand names. There's only three side plate screws holding this in. And one of the things I like to do before I pull those side places, I like to take that anti-reverse off. That way if I do knock out the main gear, well, at least uh, I didn't disrupt or dislodge the uh, anti-reverse dog that's in there. With the three side plate screws off, we can take this apart. We're going to see that it's a relatively simple inside to this, but you also have access on two sides. So we're going to take this side off as well. Keep your screws and side plates separate and keep your orientation proper. So in this case, I think it's hard to mess this up going back in. This is the right side plate. And these plates, as far as I am aware, are not... Uh, you can't switch this from right to left. That doesn't mean people haven't tried. Alright, we'll take the three of these off. And I can see that the only thing that's probably wrong with this reel at the moment is just that Oh, we've had a lot of dried grease. All right, I'm going to put the three screws that belong on that side plate into the side plate. And then like I do with all my pieces and parts, they're going into a parts tray. And that's nothing more than the bottom of a fast food container. Well, now you see why I had to take that side plate off. And that's because there's a screw holding the axle shaft uh, and the cross wind block together. So we're going to remove the axle shaft screw here. There's a little washer on the end of it. Pay attention, don't lose that washer. And with that screw removed, well, there's some dried grease on there, but we should be able to pull this axle shaft up and out. There you go. And then you'll see that the cross wind block falls out from the other side. So that's a good place to take a picture so that you know which side of the reel that goes on. So when it's time to reinstall, you don't have that problem. All right. I'm going to just clean that up. There's relatively nothing in here, but as a demonstration to show you, you should, for the most part, when you do a real service, you should take all of the moving parts out and uh, inspect them, clean them up, and remove them. The problem, uh, it's the one thing you probably don't need to do that a lot of people seem to want to do for some reason is to remove the bail arm. And all that does is seems to give you trouble. If that bell is operating properly, I do not recommend you taking it off. There's really no need to. All you need to do is a drop of oil into where the bell is, and uh, that will give it to you and uh, ensure that it works properly. All right, I keep a ratchet set on hand. I'm going to try and Take this off first in a clockwise manner and then in a counterclockwise manner. When I tried the, uh, the counterclockwise me method, it didn't work. That's your normal lefty loosey. And so we had to switch over, just try it the opposite way. It's called reverse threaded, and that's what this was. The nut comes off, the rotor can be removed. And now we have the collar here. And I'm not sure, I'm not seeing on the box here, I'm looking. There should be a bearing underneath this assembly, so we'll show you how to get to the bearing. All right, the nut is cleaned, and again, th this, this reel has no evidence of being used, so it's um, not real hard to see that from a um, maintenance standpoint, you don't have to clean anything up, nothing got dirty. All right, well, this will probably fall through, so let's just see if it just can't be pulled out, just like that. That is your pinion, pinion gear shaft. And there's three screws here. Take a picture before you remove this collar. Notice that, that bump guard there. That's what I was talking about, the bail trip. 
that bell trip if you're holding your arm down is at the, basically the 8 or the 9 o'clock position. Make sure when you go to reinstall that's where you put it. Otherwise you'll have an interesting uh, reset there when it comes to the, um, the bell trip. It'll, it'll, you'll go to flip it and you'll have a high side out of sequence. It'll still flip, but it won't be the natural flip that you would expect from a left-handed crank uh, spin fishing wheel. All right, I took the three screws out. We noticed that there was a washer on the top. That collar comes off, and now we have the bearing under there. You should just be able to push this bearing right out. Hold the bearing, give it a spin. This is a shielded, but not a uh, not a sealed bearing. Notice there's an open side to the bearing here, and the closed side on that, and the open side goes into the reel jacket. So I'm going to use fishing reel oil. I don't uh, I don't grease the bearings. I oil them. We're going to take that. While we have this out, clean it up. There's some old grease, as you can see, that's accumulated on the bottom of the pinion gear shaft. Just uh, Wipe it off or scrape it off. In this case, the old greases tend to need to be scraped. And use a, a razor knife for that. If you use a razor knife, please be careful. It is a razor knife. Get the old grease off of there. And then I want to take a hard brush. I just want to run it through the channels where the pinion gear teeth are to knock off any grease that might be in there. Again, this one doesn't appear to be used, so I think what's just happened is there's been an evaporation of the grease is causing it to dry. I'm going to use pen precision real grease now. I'm going to load this up. Then I can take the bearing. Remember, the open side goes down. I can reload that into the case. What I've been doing lately is on the outside of the bearing, which of course is not a moving part, <laughs> but on the outside of the bearing, I've been putting a light coating of grease there just so it doesn't seize up in that channel. Every now and then you're going to find that you're working on a reel that's kind of seized and uh, you can't get that bearing out or it's not easy to get the bearing out. That's because salt water or contamination or dirt or any of that kind of stuff has kind of lodged itself in there. This is a way to avoid that. Remember what we said about that hump. You want that around the the 8 or the 9 o'clock position if you're looking up, if your arm here is in the 6 o'clock position. Okay, well I skipped ahead a little bit because, well, you don't need to see me trying to start small screws, but uh, we'll finish them here. And again, that trip lever belongs at that 8 o'clock position. If it was over on this side or over here, uh, you'd probably have a, a bell. It would be a little bit more difficult to flip. And the reason for that is that uh, it would be out of position where you normally would expect it to crank. There was a washer that went on top of that. And we have the rotor. Check underneath. Again, make sure all this is clean. And again, this wheel appears to not be used. I'm going to oil that triplicate rubber mechanism. I'm going to put some oil onto both sides of the bail wire and a little bit onto the line guide. And then we can go ahead and reset this. So there is a rectangular slot on the bottom of the rotor. And then remember, this was a reverse threaded nut. So you're going to want to tighten by turning it counterclockwise. For those of us that don't have a, uh, an analog clock anymore, that means turn the nut towards you. Then you can give it a spin, make sure everything works fine which it does. Okay, let's turn our attention then to the main gear. Remember we took that anti-reverse off because you'll see on the back end of this there's going to be a series of slots and every now and then if you leave it engaged this little end of the dog here gets pulled out and you shoot a spring or the like. So I've just learned from experience and yeah looking for a lot of springs that it's easier just to make sure that that is in the off position. And I'm going to use the penetrating oil to soften up that lacquered grease. Sometimes you're going to need a little bit more help, so I'll use a flat bladed screwdriver here. I'm trying to be sensitive to the paint. I really don't want to rip the paint up. So I'll just do it lightly. Just to make sure it gets cleaned. 
So if you have a question on this reel or any reel, if you leave it in the comment section, I will, will try to answer that question for you. Sometimes folks ask questions about the reel history or maybe who made this reel and uh, how many other varieties of it are out there. Uh, you're going to find these reels probably look like Shakespeare reels and others. Uh, sometimes it's a mechanical question, you're working on something and you just can't seem to, to uh, get it right. Your reel was working fine before you started, but now something's skipping or missing or hard to turn or whatever. If you leave those questions out there, I'll try to answer them for you. Alright, we've cleaned up the back of the main gear. We're going to do the same thing. It's all about inspection. And it's about relubrication. So we're going to get some oil, uh, some grease onto the main shaft. And then on this side you want to do the same thing. There's an accumulation of old grease. You can see how that's just coming up in a chunk. And that's just because that's dried. And been uh, thrown off by centrifugal force. Well, you just want to get rid of that. You don't want that in there. The dirt and the old greases are not not going to help real performance at all. Do the same thing. We're just going to knock that off and knock it off of the piece. Notice that there is a copper uh, flange here that goes over that stud. So if you are uh, working on a reel and you can't quite figure out why the, the reel is just a little sloppy, well, make sure that you reinstall that little copper uh, sleeve there over that stud. All right. Check all the teeth, make sure that they're uniform, make sure that there's no cracks or chips or broken teeth. We've greased both sides of that, we go ahead and put that back into the case, just like that. So that's your gear side service. And now we just want to install the rest of the reel after a cleaning. Well, we know this was hard coming out because I had to pull it up, a little bit of a tug fest there. Just looking for a piece of steel wool. So I use the steel wool as a gentle buffing tool, and it's 4.0 steel wool. It's the um, finest steel wool. It's not abrasive. You're not going to do a lot of any damage to it. It's more going to be a buffing. And I just use that when I need a little bit of an extra assist on removing stubborn greases and the like. Sometimes salt corrosion. Light, only a light uh, coat of the grease. And then this is where you need your memory now. We're going to put a little bit of grease onto the channels where this cross wind block is going to ride. Remember that the cross wind block was on the gear side, but the screw for the cross wind block was on the non gear side. Search your axle shaft. This is only going to go in one way. I had it upside down, so if it's not grabbing those uh, blocks, I'll just uh, invert it. Now look for this hole. You need the screw hole in that axle shaft to align with the screw hole in the cross wind block. And once you find that, you can go ahead and take that screw and that small washer and reinstall there. So Scott finds these reels at flea markets. If you're looking for project reels, if you're looking for bargains, if you're looking for some fun, if you're just trying to go do some treasure hunting, those flea markets are great places to, to find a variety of reels. Some inexpensive, some of them very expensive, some antiques, some uh, just kind of average reels that uh, have been around a long time. and. Some of them that are just plain broken, and I'm going to do a video on how to find dependable and reliable reels at flea markets uh, at a relatively inexpensive price. I was asked to do that, and there will be one coming up in this week or so. I would encourage you to look for it. And one of the best ways to look for it, well, subscribe to the channel. That'll, that'll tell you when I've posted that video, and you'll be able to see the uh, video I'm re referencing. Well, I made a point of putting that stud inside the cavity for that um, cross line block. And now we're going to put the three screws back in on this side. And then we'll turn around and we'll
fix the other cover. I like to separate these screws because they're different screws. And if you uh, if you commingle them, well, you're going to have some trouble sometimes putting a screw in the wrong place. The ones on the gear side are longer screws than the ones on the non-gear side. So if you find yourself with a screw that didn't go all the way down in the mounting, you probably have it on the wrong side of the reel. This is a quality made reel. It's a rather simple design. There's only one ball bearing in it. You only need the one ball bearing in it here. But uh, overall, it's a, it's a very nice reel, and I'm glad that Scott took the time to, to send this one in so that we could all learn from it. The Daytona 2, number 95. All right, on this side, we have shorter screws. They go in as well. These are Phillips head screws. Every now and then, I get asked about, can I use a mechanical or a battery-operated screwdriver for uh, the real repair. And I don't recommend that. I don't like the torque on them. And I don't like the fact that uh, if you're working on subtypes of cases, like a graphite case and the like, you, you can risk damaging it by over-tightening those screws. Actually, <clears throat> it wasn't the result of a, um, a problem with the uh, mechanical screwdriver. I just had somebody tell me that they over-tightened the screw broke the head off of it and now they got to go find the replacement parts so I know where they are. That's an example of a question that can be left in the comment section. I was able to, to direct that person to that. Okay, that's the last of the three screws. I'm just going to use a paper towel to wipe off the greases that may have come off my, my thing. I'm going to reset to the active anti-reverse dog. We're going to put the now on this one, you can put a drop of oil on the threads here. Again, it's a new reel. Beautiful reel. It uh, hasn't had the seizing. You can see how that one operates. We'll just take a moment and we'll show you the drag system. I wouldn't expect anything to go wrong in here because, well, best as I can tell, this hasn't been used. But there's a C-clip, flat C-clip, riding in a groove that sits in the channel here. Hold your finger on it. It's going to shoot if you don't. Work a screwdriver underneath it and then you can pull that clip out. I'm just going to leave that on my bench here because we want to get to the washers, see what we have under here. All right, and these, these are typical washers of the day. So we have um, washers that have kind of frozen because of the, the grease. We have a Teflon washer we have two leather washers. One's in here. Let's see if we can get that one out. And this is where you need to be careful. Because if you rip them, you're going to have some trouble with them. But these leather washers have dried out. So how do you restore a leather washer? You, you put fishing reel grease on there. Now I use Cal's Universal Drag Grease. It's uh, intended for drag washers. But don't run out and get a, a whole new... Uh, jug of it just because you need to dip two, uh, two washers into it. Go ahead and use your fishing reel grease for that. Since I do a lot of the drag washers, I don't, uh, uh, I have a, a container of it. All right, those two will refresh that. These are porous and the, uh, they will absorb the, um, the grease and that'll keep them fresh. All right. And the flat washer, and the small Teflon washer, and then we have the top washer. Press that stack down so you can clear the, uh, the groove or the flat spring. And then put the one side in and reverse course now. Just work it around. And this requires a bit of hand strength. Sometimes you may need a a uh, screwdriver or something to help you bend it the rest of the way. But eventually you will get this in here if you've set it properly. There you go. And now we're reset on that drag washer system. So the spool can go on. We have our drag adjuster knob. And we are about ready to give it a final test, make sure that everything's working the way it should.
So while we do that, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everybody involved in keeping us safe during the pandemic. Your efforts are truly appreciated, and uh, I thank you for that. Here we go. we got an anti-reverse. We've got a nice, smooth, functioning wheel. It's amazing what a fresh coat of grease will do. Easily functioning bale. And the last thing I'll do then is I'll reset this the way it was. We're going to just collapse the handle inward, which was a way to protect it uh, for storage. Okay, so that's the reel. That's the Compact Daytona 2, number 95, from Japan, circa 1970s. I hope you've enjoyed that all. To everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.